Well, it is our pleasure here on Save by Nostalgia, powered by Starcade Media, to present this interview with Sensei Ron Thomas. You know him as Bobby Brown from the film The Karate Kid, and also he was able to reprise his role recently in the television show for Netflix, Cobra Kai. Welcome to the show, Sensei Ron Thomas. It was great to see you in that season two episode, man. It was just cool to see the gang back together and the Cobra Kai back to uh, doing what they do best. Oh, well, <laughs> it's always magical when we work together. You know, we've been friends through the years. So, um, but when we get together and we're actually working on a project like this, um, <clears throat> it's it was pure magic. I mean, we've done the sweep the leg video and um, some other things along the way. But, uh, you know, I did I did a thing with on Tosh point oh with Marty Cove and uh, but this thing was really special because it's a continuation of our of our characters and it's kind of like a, a continuation of the Karate Kid with this 35 year gap, <laughs> you know, so it was very cool. Yeah, talk a little bit more about that, kind of how cool it's been uh, to see the show become a hit amongst fans, just new and old, and, and kind of what the emotions you guys are going through, uh, especially you reprising your role as Bobby Brown once again. Yeah, um, you know, I just, I, I put a post out on social media about the irony of, first of all, that we began principal photography on The Karate Kid on Halloween, on October 31st, you know, back in 1983. And we began principal photography as a as a group um, on on this particular episode, episode six, on Halloween, October thirty first, two thousand eighteen. Wow! Which was, you know, and Billy had reminded me of that <clears throat> on, that morning uh, as we were coming out of the makeup trailers and walking around the set and getting ready to shoot. He said, "You know, you know, we began principal photography, uh, you know, on this day, which was." ironic in itself, which kind of set the tone for the entire week. The entire week was literally pure magic. And we were, um, it was surreal. It was, uh, magic is, is, a, is a really good word. It was just magical for us as the Cobra group, you know, cause we, we're all like brothers and, and we talk all the time, <clears throat> but to, um, to, uh, just continue and, and reunite. And it was kind of like, uh, it was almost like 35 years disappeared. We were on the set. Uh, there was a few things that had changed, the crew, the, the director, the, you know, the writers, the, but, uh, but by and large, somehow, some way, a lot of things were very similar. The set was very comfortable. There was a synergy between us, this chemistry that's always sort of been there. And it was, um, we, had a we had a blast, you know? We really, really did. Well, the show's a massive hit, and you know it's it's unbelievable because we're about a month shy of the 35th anniversary of the release of the Karate Kid. It was June 22nd, and it's funny you talk about being together as a group as the Cobra Kai because in in Cobra Kai in the show, um, it's very split. Obviously, you kind of uh, there's not really a, a recognized protagonist and antagonist. They kind of between uh, Johnny and Daniel, they go back and forth. But as we talked about 35 years ago, one thing that always kind of struck me is uh, kind of looking into your career and more about what you've done is. You were already a very accomplished martial artist when the film started, when it started filming back in 1983, correct? Yeah, well, very accomplished. I don't know. I don't know if I would use that word. I was a second degree black belt and I took martial arts very, very seriously. Um, I was a second degree black belt in Koden Kan Jiu Jitsu, um, which is unlike Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, does not just focus on the ground, but it's a lot of ground fighting as well as throws and takedowns and, and a lot of kicking and sparring too. So, you know, I was very familiar with uh, wearing a gi, and I was a second-degree black belt. But the uh, the weird thing about that is that I've told this story before. When I got the audition for Karate Kid, you know, I <clears throat> I moved to Hollywood to pursue my dreams as an actor, and when I got the audition, my agent said, "Don't say anything about your martial arts. Don't don't tell them about your black belt. Don't say anything." And I'm like, "Why?" The movie's called The Karate Kid, you know, and, and, and she's like, listen, they're looking for actors, really good actors. They're going to train you in the martial arts anyway. So if they ask you about it, fine, talk about it. But if they don't ask you, don't say anything. Not yet. And I thought that was kind of weird. Um, so they hired me, you know, 
basically off acting skills and not martial arts at all. Well, kind of talk about that because, um, as I understood it, you, uh, Pat E. Johnson, uh, of course, trained everybody uh, for the fight car choreography for this film. He was a, a, amazing. He did Enter the Dragon as well. He was played the referee in the film. But talk about kind of your guys' training because, as, as I understood it, the Cobras were all kind of trained very separately. Martin Cove even trained separately from you guys. And uh, just kind of talk about your training and uh, obviously – maybe at that point they realized that you were already somewhat accomplished because you, you were probably far ahead of what everybody else was doing, but kind of talk, get into the training with Pat. Yeah, they, they trained us separately. Uh, you know, the five of us, the five Cobras. Um, sometimes we trained with, with Marty, but most of, mostly it was us. Um, and then, you know, Pat trained um, Ralph separately from us and kind of kept us all separate. Um, I think it had to do with scheduling and everything. Every day we were on the set training in karate, whether or not we were shooting that day. So we started rehearsing and we just continued to rehearse and train all the way through filming. Um, so, you know, we trained for a couple hours every single day. Um, and I, I had a blast. There was a point where Pat had uh, put on some sparring gear. And we actually did a little bit of contact and sparring and everything. And, and it's funny because <laughs> I think this is the first time when Pat really realized that actually I was a little bit better than he thought. I wasn't just another actor. So we were sparring and I was actually sparring with Pat. And he, he attacked me and I just, I did this little move that I was very comfortable with, just kind of getting out of the way of the line of attack and spinning around. And I, I nailed him with a spinning back kick, which surprised him. <laughs> And surprised me a little bit <laughs> too, but um, you know he he uh, he came up to me after the training and he said, "You you know some stuff, don't you? You've you've had a little training." And and I said, "Yeah, you know I, I do. I'm a second degree black belt in Koden Kan Jiu Jitsu, and, and trained with uh, some people that he knew, you know Wally J and and some of these famous martial artists." So um, when it came time for the montage. At, at the tournament scene where Pat had to choreograph all these little fights. He had brought in all these black belts from all around the LA area to be extra fighters in the tournament scene. And um, he was just busy. He had to choreograph this fight over here and this fight over here and this fight over here. He came to me and he said, Ron, will you just choreograph a couple little fight scenes with this guy and this guy? And um, just choreograph, you know, some short little things just for the montage and then let me see them and I'll okay them or not. So I choreographed my own stuff. And when you see me do like a flying leg scissors to this guy in the montage, to this, to the song, you're the best around. Um, of course. And I take, yeah. I take him down and I hit him. <clears throat> That's a jujitsu move. Those flying leg scissors, jujitsu move. So I did, I did my little choreography and, and uh, Pat gave me the thumbs up on him and I got to keep it. So <laughs> Lots well, and Glenn, the, the Bobby character kind of seems to be the most sympathetic out of the group. Uh, he continues to want to show mercy to Daniel. Uh, can you kind of talk about uh, Bobby's thought process in that moment? In the moment where he's showing mercy to Daniel? Yeah. Yeah, he's really, really conflicted by that point. I mean, Bobby's conflicted through the whole movie. You know, he's, he's got his friends. They're doing bad things. And there's a part of him, you know, he's, he's really torn in two. Um, there's a part of him that knows it's wrong and this bullying thing is wrong and that Crease has taken this whole thing too far. But it comes to a boiling point at that moment because Crease is saying, hey, Bobby, go out and sacrifice yourself for the sake of Johnny. <laughs> you know, go get disqualified. Go hurt him. I, but I can beat this guy, Sensei. I don't want him beaten, but I'll be disqualified. You know, I want him out yeah. of commission. Which really hurt you know that really hurt bobby so he bobby goes out and most people don't know this but there's a whole fight scene that i have with ralph that there's three or four or five points that ralph and i score off of each other before i finally before bobby finally decides he's going to hurt his leg and follow through with crease's orders um and all through that fight Bobby's conflicted. He keeps looking over to Crease saying, I don't know if I want to do it. And, you know, Bobby's scoring points off of Daniel. 
Well, all that got cut out of the movie, got left on the editing room floor. And, uh, you, you know, I just, Bobby just walks out and, and you can see him. He looks over at Chris, he looks at Daniel, he looks back at Chris, he looks at Daniel. And finally, he decides, okay, I'm going to jump up in the air and I'm going to hurt this, I'm going to hurt his leg and take him out of commission and disqualify myself. And there's another scene that gets left out of the movie, which right after that, where I walk over to Chris and take off my black belt, drop it at his feet. Wow. And walk, out of, walk out of the tournament, which says a lot about Bobby. Um, and so <clears throat> as an actor, I'm playing the, the part of Bobby with all of that in mind, you know, that Bobby's actually going to walk away from the Cobra Kai. He's going to drop his belt at Crease's feet and leave. Um, they didn't keep that either. <laughs> so, you know, the fans, they don't know that. They don't know that part of the script. So they, but um, that's Bobby's thought process. He's really wounded, at, you know, at, at a core level um, that, that his sensei is making him do this because he knows he can beat Daniel. So, yeah. but, but he also doesn't want to hurt Daniel because there's that compassion inside of Bobby that never really wanted to hurt anybody. He just wanted to win the tournament. So it's who Bobby is. Yeah, and I think it's, it's kind of funny because in, in the show Cobra Kai, we find out that uh, the year before in the All Valley Tournament 1983, it was actually Tommy and not you that had faced Johnny in the finals. I always thought, hey, I, I, what happened there? Like, did, did, he, did he beat you in the semifinals? Like, there's got to be a whole other storyline there that's left out because, I mean, I still think well, you and Tommy would have been a great match. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, I didn't write the episode. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who wrote that in. Um, I disagree with that storyline. <laughs> I just don't think that that's how that's it, interesting. Yeah. I kind of thought this one kind of stood out. I was like, whoa, that's kind of, I well, mean, I get. And, you know, and here's, here's a funny thing. So I, I was sworn to secrecy, right? We just couldn't put it out on social media or anything because the creators of the show, they wanted to surprise the fans. They're, they're thinking about their fans and, and they wanted to make it a surprise, which it was, you know, and it, it worked. People were shocked and I don't know if they were shocked, but they were definitely surprised to see the original Cobras. Um, so I kept it, you know, I kept it under wraps and, and I talked to Daryl Vidal all the time. We play golf together. We're good friends. And, <laughs> and so Daryl, I didn't even tell Daryl you know, that we were doing the episode. And so he, after the episode, he texts me like a couple of days after it, it, you know, everything got released. And he says, well, you kept that secret. <laughs> and uh, I said, yeah, I had to. And then, you know, a couple lines later in the text, he goes, he says, and Tommy beat me yeah. <laughs> to get to the finals in 1983. I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, uh, sticking with the yeah. tournament montage, can you talk a little bit about the intensity, kind of what the mood was like uh, on the set as you're trying to film just these intricate uh, karate sequences? Yeah, I mean, like I said, it, um, it was just the montage itself was just, a, you know, just trying to get through the, the tournament to take us toward the end. And, and uh, it, it was you know, film this little fight scene over here, film this little fight scene over here. Okay. Now the cameras move over here and film this, you know, it's just nothing intense. I don't think anything real intricate about it. Just John Appleton's a genius and, uh, was, you know, the late John Appleton was a genius director and knew what he wanted and shot all these scenes and put it together. Yeah. It was tremendous. A lot of, uh, really ambitious shots there. Um, and it, you know, it's funny you mentioned, the um you know the your fight with daniel getting cut because i always felt like i well the montage is amazing and the song it's iconic and of course it's a part of cult, pop culture forever but i always felt like a lot of a lot of the fights especially with daniel and some of the other cobra guys were were really kind of sloppily edited like the, his fight with chad mcqueen it's like that just kind of ends abruptly it's like they would have had a war and you really just see daniel score one point on him and it's over and it's kind of choppily edited so i guess in the that's kind of you know part of the movie magic is uh you know, trimming those shots down and getting it as quick as possible. Man, I, there was probably a lot of really cool stuff that uh, was left on the editing room floor, you know? Yeah, there always is. I mean, you know, for, for me, I didn't know that they were cutting out my whole scene. I mean, I, I don't, you know, I kind of wish they didn't for Bobby, for Bobby's character. And I, we walked in to do some looping, um, which is sound work, you know, after the film is already cut. And that's the first time I found out that they completely cut 
down my scene and, and I said, John, what happened to my whole fight scene with, with Daniel? And he said, uh, well, uh, we thought it would be just better if you just got right to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I got right to it. All right. You took out my whole fight scene. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know the decision making what happens after editing, you know, you get the, you get the editor's cut, then you get the director's cut, then you get the studio's cut and everybody has their input and then it, it comes out. You know, there's things that were left out of episode six of Cobra Kai that I wish weren't left out, you know, but that's just the name of the game. Did, did you have at all a sense, because I know it's, it's easy to ask this question 35 minutes later and we ask this a, a lot of actors or directors that we talk to from films, uh, iconic films such as this, but did you have, when you're filming this, any sense at all that, that, you know, 35 years later, you'd still be, you know, talking about it and that it would still be such a part of, of the American lexicon. I mean, it's, it's impossible to predict these things. In fact, I heard a lot of the actors didn't want to do it because it was called the Karate Kid. It's just amazing how, you know, what happens and how things become a hit. And it's just got to be incredible to, yeah. to look back on that. Yeah. And I was one of those actors. I hated the title. I thought the yeah. title was ridiculous. Um, and I think we all agreed with it. it was, we, you know, uh, the answer is no. I had no clue that I'd be talking to you 35 years later and we'd be talking about Cobra Kai, you know, much less streaming, downloading video off of YouTube, which doesn't, didn't, you know, the internet didn't even exist. So, to, you know, to see how this whole thing is unfolded and, and the, the synchronicity and, and, and all of it, is uh, it's surreal to to experience it and to be a part of it um i back in the day after the movie was over i was i did a couple media interviews and and uh, i had people telling me that they're you know they did the interview i had one guy do the do the interview a tv interview and then at the end of it he says to me he says you know there's no audience for this movie wow and, and my manager my own personal manager said the same thing to me so my own personal manager never came to the set ever 12 weeks didn't come to the set to meet academy award-winning director didn't come to the set to meet an academy award-winning producer uh, you know didn't come to the set to meet any people to network to to further my career to get me publicity did did nothing because he thought in his mind the this movie had no audience wow. so people are People can be dead wrong trying to predict, you know, what has an audience and what doesn't. Yeah, and I mean, it still has an audience today is where you were in episode six of Cobra Kai. And you mentioned that uh, you didn't like how some things were left on the cutting room floor. I kind of wanted to ask you about that and maybe some specifics on some things you would have liked to seen uh, make it. You mean for episode six? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's so fresh. I'll just leave it. <laughs> I'll just leave it uh, as it is and, and not comment on that right now. Uh, you know, yeah. it's, it's things that the fans won't know. They didn't read this original script. They weren't there for the shooting. They don't know. It's just things for me personally and um, sort of things that I would have liked to see or left in for my character, for Bobby, you know, because my job is to uh, present Bobby in his best light and protect the character. Um, and, and there was... A few things that would have, I think, in my mind, you know, <clears throat> would have um, stood out and, and said a lot about the character and everything. But th these are very little things. This we're sure. talking about. We're talking about a television series versus a movie, and and a series moves fast and furious. They they got to get stuff done. They got they got shots to make. They've got you know overtime <laughs> considerations once you go past a certain amount of hours now you're paying the whole cast and crew double time i mean a television series moves very very fast it's very fast paced um and so a lot of times they overshoot uh try and then they try to get editing and they try to fit everything into 30 minutes which is really hard to do um so i'm not disappointed i think episode six was amazing i think it had the exact impact that the creators envisioned they wanted it to be a surprise for the the fans and the audience and uh, who were thirsting for the original cobras to come back and and i think it worked you know uh, i think the whole series works these guys are you know um hayden schlossberg john Hurwitz, and josh hielder are very very smart very creative and 
they know what they want and they know what they're doing. Well, I tell you what, uh, Ron, you, um, you know, we're, we're, we do a, a sports show here. We're big sports fans. And I know a kind of uh, in your career, you've authored two books, uh, one of which is Positive Thinking is for Sissies. Amazing title. And uh, The Best You Can Sucks, Five Reasons Why and What to Do About It. You have uh, been into, you know, transformational personal development. You've written these books. Kind of talk about these books, how this came about and kind of what uh, what you're up to now and how people can get a hold of you. Yeah, um, I well, m- mostly what I mostly what I've been doing lately is raising my five year old daughter. Um, wow. that takes up, she takes up a lot of my time. The past five years have been amazing. Uh, but when I, you know, in between watching cartoons and you know whatever whatever else I'm doing with her, taking her to gymnastics class right after I'm done with this interview, um, in between that, I'm 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 actually in the middle of another book that Karate Kid fans are going to love. Cobra Kai fans are going to love it. I can't release the title yet, um, but they're just going to love the title in and of itself. Um, but yeah, I've, I've, everything's kind of evolved uh, as an act, as an actor, you're studying human behavior. And um, as a, an athlete, you're studying the power of the mind and focus and, and discipline. And, and uh, then as a sensei, you're by default, a life coach, <laughs> you know, you're coaching, the kids and your students and, and, and a lot of times the parents on being better people, um, getting more out of life at, at winning. So, and then all of those things evolved and I got some training in neurolinguistic programming, which is Tony Robbins background and personal development and work a lot with athletes. And it kind of just evolved to this point where nowadays I'm focused on getting these books done, focused on putting out some training online in the form of webinars and, and uh, and coaching programs that people can purchase um, for different areas, athletes being one. And, um, and motivational speaking. I love getting in front of the audience and, and, and talking about um, some of these topics. So positive thinking is for sissies came about because I wrote up uh, back in the day, it was called the black belt in excellence. And I changed that title to the mastery Boot Camp. Um, which was just a comprehensive life coaching, life develop, personal development program that I was that I was coaching for teams and people, and got a lot of results. The content of positive thinking is for sissies comes out of that program, and um, you know, so now I just enjoy getting in front of people and and helping them, helping make a dif- difference in other people's lives. You know, which is ironically, the Karate Kid did that. Um, yeah. It's kind of weird to say about a movie, but it changed a lot of people's lives for the very fact that they started studying martial arts and they were inspired, you know. So uh, it's kind of all just kind of has formulated itself into this personal development theme of my life that I really, really enjoy because as an actor, you know, you have a platform, but acting doesn't really change people's lives. It doesn't have an impact except for entertainment value, you know, um, unless the actor chooses to have that impact and and use their platform. So, uh, yeah, I I, I really enjoy that part. Well, and it's the, the quote on on your website guys, which is, uh, you can check out all this and and order the book and, and and information, all this on, uh, on the website, which is senseironthomas.com. Great quote is few people understand the psychology of winning better than Sensei Ron. And I'll tell you this: we're here in Kansas City, big Chiefs fans. We're trying to get the Chiefs to a Super Bowl. I'm sending them. I'm sending each member a copy of this book right now. We got to get this. We got to get over the hill here, Ron, in Kansas City, and get to a Super Bowl. So we're trying to get this done. We're going to need this book to do it. I think, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Well, I'm, um, I'm putting together this uh, athletes uh, mindset program that there will be a coaching process on available online. So that'll be cool for athletes. So I just got to get busy, get uh, finishing up the content for it. Absolutely. You got to get this five-year-old of yours grown up, man. That's it's, it's going to happen too fast anyways. Ugh. So it's just oh, unbelievable. And you know, you got to cherish these years though now, because we'll, we'll, you know, soon it'll be the teenage years. I don't even, I can't even empathize with you there, man. I don't have any kids. So I can't even imagine what that's going to be like. So yeah, <laughs> that's going to be yeah. great. Yeah, but it's that's... coming either. It's coming regardless. So, <laughs> Right, right. Um, Ron, I tell you what, I, I can't tell you how much this means to us to be able to have done this with you. And 
Um, I know, um, know you're a busy guy and I know a lot is coming up and I know that, uh, hopefully the, the, the you know, the recognition and the popularity from uh, episode six of, of Cobra Kai season two just continues to, to escalate. It was, it was my favorite episode. I, I sold this to someone. I, I mean, this It was my favorite episode of a television show ever. I mean that I said that when it wow. happened, like, amazing. That's, I mean, that's really, a great, te- that's a great testimonial. Well, you know, I'm always such a fan of the the dirt bike scene and the Karate Kid, and then you got the same song by the, ma- the group Matches and the Ride and all that. Like it just hits, a, strikes a chord with me. Ron, great stuff, man. We can't thank you enough for for going back in time, 35 years, and bringing it here to the future with Cobra Kai. Uh, best of luck, my friend. We'll definitely stay in touch. And thanks so much for everything you've done for us, man. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. You bet. Thanks a lot.